Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mixed Signals. In this video series, we're going to talk about audio interfaces, specifically external audio interfaces, which are the vast majority of interfaces used nowadays. You might have seen devices like these and wondered what they do, whether you need one, a big one or a small one, cheap one, or one that costs as much as your car. In this first video, we will try to explain the basics of audio interfaces, what they do and how they work, and also try to answer some frequently asked questions that might help you decide what kind of interface you need or whether you need one at all. In the second video, we will look in depth at the analog and digital connections commonly found on audio interfaces and what they can be used for. And in the third video, we will take a more in-depth look at the way audio interfaces work and we'll explore a few of the technical specifications that might be of interest to you when buying an audio interface or building your first recording rig. So hopefully by the end of this series, you will have a better understanding of what audio interfaces do and what's on offer. And you'll be able to make an informed decision based on your specific needs. So let's get to it. So as the name heavily implies, an audio interface is a device that helps your computer interface, or in other words, communicate with external analog and digital audio gear, be that mics, guitars, speakers, synthesizers, effects, mixing desks, headphones, you name it. If all these functions sound familiar and unremarkable to you, you are right, because audio interface is just a new fancy title for good old sound cards. You might have noticed that most of the devices that we interact with on a daily basis, such as computers, mobile phones, TVs, smart speakers, to name a few, already provide some of that functionality. All of these devices have specialized audio interfaces built into them to help them interface with each other and the outside world. But in our video series, we will be talking about dedicated external recording audio interfaces, which tend to have much better specs, a variety of connections, and can be used for high quality recording and playback. Most audio interfaces perform four main functions in one box. The most basic function of an audio interface is to provide a way for your computer to exchange digital audio signals with the outside world. Most current interfaces provide that through a USB or a Thunderbolt connection, but there are other alternatives such as Firewire and Ethernet. The type of connection will determine the number of simultaneous audio channels you can send and receive from your computer, and also the time it takes for your audio to travel to and from the computer. That time is referred to as the latency of an interface, and it's very important that that is as short as possible for a smooth recording experience. But most of the signals you might want to record on your computer are probably not digital, but instead they're analog. For instance, a vocal recorded with a microphone or an instrument such as electric guitar or synthesizer. In that case, the interface needs to perform the following. Not all analog signals have the same strength, or in other words, volume. The standard signal level used in professional recording equipment is referred to as line level. Line level signals are produced by most pro mixers, outboard gear and synthesizers. Microphones and certain passive instruments such as electric guitars and basses produce signals that are much quieter than line level. So the audio interface needs to preamplify these signals to raise them to a usable line level. Another functionality is to convert the analog signal to a digital signal that the computer can understand. This is also often shortened to A to D conversion. Since the computer can only deal with digital or discrete signals, basically a series of numbers or numerical values that represent a signal, the analog or continuous signals are converted by the audio interface into digital signals through the process of A to D conversion. The frequency and accuracy of this process, referred to as a sampling rate and bit depth, is incredibly important to the quality of the resulting digital signal, which is very obvious by this example. As you might have guessed, the audio interface also needs to perform the inverse operation and convert the digital signal coming from the computer into analog signals that you can then hear through your speakers and your headphones. That process is predictably named D to A conversion. That's all it is. Now you know everything. Uh, obviously, this was a very brief and simplified description of the functions of audio interfaces. In our third video in this series, we provide more in-depth information about the various audio signal levels found in the studio and the features of preamps. We also explain the processes of A to D and D to A and the importance of various sampling rates and bit depths while recording. 
and we introduce you to the world of latency and the complex relationship and delicate balance between low latency, quality recordings, and a happy computer. So if you're hungry for more technical talk, be sure to check that out later. But now we will proceed by answering FAQs that a lot of beginners, and not just beginners, have regarding buying and using audio interfaces. Couldn't I just use the computer's inputs and outputs? You could. Obviously, the quality and variety of the inputs and outputs uh, on your integrated sound card will not be amazing. The noise on your recordings and your speakers will be much higher. The preamps will probably not provide much gain or have a way to control it. Uh, and it will probably be impossible to record multiple sources at once and monitor through many different speakers and headphones simultaneously. Having said that, do I absolutely, definitely need an audio interface if I want to record, stream, or podcast with a USB mic? No, the interface is built right into your mic. If I want to play software synthesizers with a controller? No, especially on macOS, there should be no problems. On Windows, you should look into getting ACO drivers for your computer's sound card in order to minimize latency. If you want to play live though, it would probably be better to have an interface with balanced outputs to have low noise and provide better connections to the front of house mixer. If I want to record my guitar directly or through some analog effects pedals? Definitely yes. Uh, you need to provide a high impedance instrument connection to your guitar setup, otherwise your tone will suffer the dreaded effects of tone sucking, which sucks. <laughs> More on that on our third video. If I have a synthesizer or a guitar pedal board that has an audio over USB feature? Basically that means it has an audio interface built in, so no, you don't need one. Do I need many inputs? Well, are you planning on recording many channels simultaneously? Then yes, definitely. Another reason to consider having a lot of inputs on your interface is having everything always hooked up to your system and having the preamps and levels set up accordingly so that when you want to record or play, you don't need to connect or adjust anything. Everything has its own dedicated channel, its own settings, and is always ready to record. On the other hand, if you're only recording a few things at a time and you can be bothered to adjust the settings of the channels and connecting things when you need them, then you might find that even two channels are more than enough. From my experience though, the more inputs, the more flexibility, expandability and faster workflow, especially when you're in the zone creatively and you don't want to have to mess around with connections and preamp levels. Do I need many outputs? Outputs. 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 If you're in a studio environment, consider how many different monitoring systems like speakers, headphones, etc. you want to feed at the same time with different mixes. If you're on your own and only listening through one set of speakers, then maybe two outputs are enough. One for the left channel, one for the right channel, obviously. Maybe you're recording a vocalist and you're sending them a mix of the song on their headphones while you're monitoring through your headphones then obviously you need four outputs. Add some more musicians to that scenario and you can see why more outputs can be very useful. Keep in mind though that a lot of interfaces, it might seem like there are enough outputs in the back and also enough headphone connections. However, it's often the case that the headphone outs are mirroring those uh, outputs at the back. So the interface actually has less independent outputs than it appears to have at first glance. Also, if you're planning to hook up outboard gear to your setup, like an external compressor, or an effects unit, you probably need dedicated outputs to accommodate for sending audio to that gear as well. Do I need the digital inputs and outputs? The main reason to have digital ADAT inputs and outputs on your interface is to add more input and output channels to your system uh, through external sets of preamps and converters. If you only plan on recording a few channels at a time, maybe a vocal mic and a guitar, and listening through a set of speakers and a pair of headphones, Probably having all those digital ins and outs is not a priority or a necessity for you. If you are planning on expanding in the future though, um, more on that later. I already have the digital inputs and outputs. Is this something I can use them for? Have a look at the digital gear that you might own. Maybe you have a digital recorder or a digital guitar effects pedal board or a modeling amplifier or digital synth. Many of those units offer direct digital connections through SPDIF. And by using these, you can avoid using up your analog inputs and outputs on your interface 
and also save your signal from being converted back and forth from analog to digital multiple times unnecessarily. Some interfaces don't have balanced outputs. Do I really need them? Yes, most definitely. Balanced outputs are the professional way to go if you want as little noise as possible in your monitoring environment or when connecting to a PA system in a live situation. So you should strongly consider prioritizing having balanced outputs on your interface. Having said that, the only place where unbalanced connections might still be very common are DJ mixers. So if you're planning on connecting to one, keep that in mind. We talk more in depth about the specifics of balanced versus unbalanced connections in the second video of the series. So check that out for more information. I might want to expand in the future. What are my options? If you want a lot of simultaneous inputs and outputs, the most obvious choice would be an external set of preamps with built-in HD and D2A. These usually come in sets of eight and can be easily connected to your interface with two optical ADAT cables, giving you access to an extra eight ins and outs. Another solution, if you are recording things separately, is to connect all your mics and instruments to an analog mixer or a patch bay and connect its outputs to your audio interface. So you can pick which inputs you want to record depending on your needs. Third solution supported on macOS is to connect multiple interfaces to your computer and then merge them into an aggregate device through the audio setup menus so that the computer treats them as one audio interface. What do the more expensive interfaces do? What extra features should I look out for? The quality and quantity of preamps and converters will usually increase together with the price of an interface. More expensive interfaces will feature preamps with less noise and more gain while adding features such as phantom power for powering condenser mics, pad switches for recording very loud sources, high pass filtering to remove low end rumble, and phase inversion for multi-mic setups. You can also find preamps that can change character and provide different flavors of sounds to your input and preamps that can be remotely controlled and can store settings through apps on your computer or your phone. More expensive interfaces might also offer better metering with larger screens and multi-segment LED meters and better monitoring tools such as hardware volume controls, the ability to switch between different speakers, monitor in mono, solo left and right, as well as multiple dedicated headphone outs. When dealing with larger and more complicated setups, higher-end interfaces can offer low latency and high channel counts, usually through Thunderbolt or Ethernet. And they can provide a lot of digital ins and outs for expandability and other features such as MIDI and word clock to communicate and sync other studio gear. Some higher-end interfaces even have native processing power. That means that you can run dedicated mixing tasks and effects plugins directly on the interface's processor and benefit from lower CPU usage on your computer and therefore lower latency. These latency figures seem pretty insignificant. What's the deal with latency? Simply put, latency is the time it takes for your signals to be converted by your audio interface and processed by your computer before you can hear them through your speakers. Obviously, trying to record with a high latency system is incredibly difficult and annoying since there will be an audible delay between what you're recording and what you're listening to. It's almost as annoying as me talking right now. Latency figures posted by manufacturers are usually very, very low and they present ideal situations. In real life, you could be experiencing more than four times that latency, especially on slower computers and especially while working on projects with a lot of tracks. So keep that in mind. If you want to know more about latency and how it's affected by your hardware, check out the third video in this series. So now you know all there is to know about interfaces. If you have any questions that we didn't include in the FAQ uh, that you'd like to get an answer to, put those in the comments and we'd be happy to reply to those. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. We are also on social media at Arbiters of Sound. We also have a podcast you can listen to and you can find that at anchor.fm slash signals and we will leave that link down below in the description. We'll see you on the next video of the series. Bye-bye.